So if we know God and we love God and we see his glory, we can't be legalist, can we? If we really concentrate on that, we cannot be a legalist because we know our works are nothing compared to his. Now, on the other hand, if we love our fellow man, we're not going to treat him uh, contrary to God's law, right? We're not going to steal from him. What's that guy doing? He's picking his pocket. Yeah, that's an old picture too. Yeah, we wouldn't steal from our fellow man. We wouldn't commit adultery. Uh, why would we not commit adultery? Because we're not going to tear our family apart and we're not going to steal somebody else's uh, uh, partner, wife or husband, right? So we wouldn't commit adultery. Um, we wouldn't uh, covet, you know, get angry at... I, I'm angry at Beverly because she's a CEO. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, she's not a CEO. But anyway, we wouldn't do that. Not really, but she's, she's pretty high up. Anyway. <laughs> we, we hold her high up. There you go. But anyway, we wouldn't do that, would we? What's the other one? Um, we're going to honor our father and mother, aren't we? Because they're our fellow man as well, and a position is to be honored. What about fathers and mothers in the church? People of... Uh, that have responsibility of leadership. Those are fathers and mothers also. And so we're supposed to honor them too. You know? Not talk about them, grumble, you know, man. You know, right? All he ever does is grub. And... So that would be another way. Um, I'm trying to... I'm, oh, we wouldn't kill. I, I knew there was another one. I couldn't remember right off. You definitely don't want to kill, do we? So if we uh, love our fellow man, we're not going to violate God's law either, are we? So, so see how that keeps you from being a lawless person. You're not going to be lawless if you love your fellow man, and you're not going to be a legalist if you love and know God, because you're going to know who he is and what he's done. Look at this verse. I, this is one of my, another one of my favorite verses. I got a lot of favorite verses. I mean, you can't help it if you read the Bible, you're going to have some favorite verses, and there are going to be a bunch of them. But this is one of my favorites. Proverbs 16.6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Let's look at that. Let's look at some basic physics, okay? Basic physics, it doesn't matter what shape that circle is or that square is, right? They're going to balance if they're placed at the right places and they weigh the same amount, right? Basic physics, okay? All right? Well, let's name our, let's name our stuff, okay? Uh, first, I want to look at this. The first thing in this balanced verse in Proverbs was mercy, right? By mercy. Okay? So what is mercy? Mercy is another word for grace, right? So part of our balancing on this tight wire through life is God's grace, right? We already talked about that. That keeps us from falling into legalism when we know that we are saved by grace, right? Right? Okay, but the other thing on, on uh, Proverbs 16.6 uh, is truth. Well, what's truth? Another word for truth is God's law, right? Uh, Psalms 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So when, when we look at that verse in uh, Proverbs, we're talking about grace and the law. Right? And they're balanced in that verse, right? So we named our, I picked the square because it's rigid and it's got rules, okay? But the circle is more, a little more relaxed, and that is our, our grace, right? You notice that, uh, that these two have to be together. If you have a court system that is without any grace, you have one of the most unfair court systems in the world because any person that goes before that judge, he can find something wrong. Right? I mean, you might have just walked across the street at the wrong spot to get to the courthouse. But everyone in this room has something they haven't done right. And so we have to have grace or we're in serious trouble. So it's got to be balanced. Law and grace have to be together. Okay, but what is the triangle that all this is balanced on? Notice at the bottom of Proverbs 16, 6, it says, By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So, 
Through mercy and truth and the fear of the Lord, we depart from evil. What is the fear of the Lord? Fear is another word for respect, isn't it? And what do you, you respect God, and that respect has intertwined into it love, right? You love and respect. Like you did, I mean, some people had fathers, maybe they couldn't love and respect like they should. But our Heavenly Father can be loved and respected, right? So, let's name that triangle there at the bottom, love. And see again how we have the balance on love. Love is what help, helps us keep this balance between law and grace. Huh? Everybody follow me? Okay. Now, would this work? People want to do this. They want to have love and they want to have grace, but they don't want the law. Now, this isn't going to balance. This is not going to work. What are you going to fall over into? Lawlessness. Right? Sooner or later, with no guidelines, man being deprived will fall into lawlessness. Right? That's why we need the law. To help us and guide us. Now the Holy Spirit uses... The, you know, he reminds us of what we read in the law, right? He says, hey, remember that verse about honoring your father and your mother? Yeah, I remember that. Well, maybe you should stop yelling at your mom right now. Oh, yeah. Sorry, mom. Right? Okay. Would this work? What are you going to fall into if you got this? You're going to fall into legalism. Right. Because there's no, there's no mercy. So then you're going to be like, uh, somebody comes into the church and you go, what? Look at this. You know they hadn't been here in four Sabbaths. I'm glad they're not as good as me. I'm so much better than that person. Right? You remember, the, remember where, how Jesus talked about two men came to pray? And one of them said, oh, thank you, Lord, that I'm not like these other people. But the publican, he said, forgive me. Forgive me. Because I am a sinner. Right? So, again, we have to have the, the grace to, to cause this balance. Would this work? Huh? Can you see it? No. It, it, it wasn't going to do float in midair. No, that wouldn't work either. You have to have that love to balance these two on, right? So again, we need all three, three to work. We need all three. Isn't that interesting? Huh. I didn't even notice that until just now. Um, well, this is the, I believe this is the last slide. I want to look at this verse because it, it really uh, accents everything that I've said. Matthew 7, 14. Now Jesus was telling them uh, several things, but then he says this, because straight is the gate. Remember he says wide is the way to destruction. But he says straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few be, few there be that find it. How much narrower, can, narrower if that's a word, how much narrower can you get than a tightrope? Huh? You can't get much more. Any more and you won't be able to walk on it. So again, the narrow way is a balance on love, with love, holding love, right? And not falling into either legalism or lawlessness. Right? Alright. I think that's it. Yep. Thank you for listening to me. I'm going to go ahead and have a prayer real quick and then we'll uh, go to the end of the service. Thank you, Lord, for this lesson. And I pray that you'll help us to maintain that balance. Help us to see when we slip into lawlessness. And help us to see when we slip into legalism. Help us not to be like that. And help us to teach our friends and family uh, your truth, your balance of truth, Lord. Thank you for all these things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.